Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1117. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we have some numbers and some samples, and we want to calculate an average for each one of the samples. Now, it turns out that each one of these samples has three numbers in it. And we actually did a video with this same data set back in 116 and saw some cool tricks. But here, we simply want to average, and there's some really easy built-in methods for doing this. The first one is the pivot table. As long as we have field names at the top, records in rows, meaning sample number, number, sample number, number, we click in a single cell, insert, pivot table, or we can use the keyboard in 2013, Alt-NV. In 2010 and 7, it's Alt-NVT. All right, so we're going to dare it and say on this existing sheet, and we're going to place it right in between a lot of other stuff. This is dangerous. Why? Because pivot tables can pivot and wipe out other data. But I'm going to keep it contained right in this area right here. So I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to drag the sample number down to rows, and instantly I have a unique list of all the samples. And when I calculate number, since it's a number down to the values area, it will default to sum, but no problem. Right click. I can either go to value field settings, which is the one stop shopping. Now we want summarize values by, and there's a bunch of functions average. I'm actually going to go to value field settings, the one stop shopping. We can change the name, but it will change automatically. Watch this. When I click the function, boop, it changes the name up here. Now I'm going to click on number formatting because I want to show only one decimal. Notice our data set has, uh, looks like, three decimals. Number formatting, number one. We don't need to use a comma. Click OK. This is only number formatting. It actually won't change the source numbers. There still may be some decimals hidden underneath. But when I click OK, instantly, there are the averages. Now, if I want to do a slightly different method in 2007 and later, average ifs. And especially if the sample numbers, it's easy to put numbers, sequential numbers. Now we have our criteria from this column that'll help us pick our numbers from this column and average them. Equals average ifs. Now I'm going to use the S one. I like the S ones. Average ifs, count ifs, sum ifs, because they're screen tips. These argument names are a little bit easier to understand. So the average range, those are the numbers. Click in the top cell right there, Control Shift Down Arrow to get all the way down to the bottom. F4 to lock it because we're copying and we need those dollar signs. Comma to get to the next argument, criteria range, same trick. Control Shift Down Arrow, F4 to lock it. And finally, comma, the criteria. That means from what in this column do you want to decide which numbers? We're going to use relative cell reference, the sample number. Close parentheses. Control-Enter, double-click, and send it down. We get the same answers, and we can hide the decimals here. In fact, if you really wanted to use the source numbers with only a single digit, we could hack off all these extra um, decimals. Because when you use number formatting, they're still there, and they might mess up a calculation. I'm going to hit F2, that active cell, F2 to put the formula in edit mode, and I'm going to use the round function. The round function allows us to round to a particular digit. Yes, we have a big formula there. I come to the end. When I type comma, I can see the screen tip then is saying, hey, what number of digits do you want to round to? We want to round to just a single decimal. The number of digits, you count from the decimal this way, one, two, three. And that tells you what position you want to round to. We want to the tenths position, so we're going to put a 1. Close parentheses. And now when I Control Enter, it'll take this edited formula and populate it all the way down. And so there we go. The advantage of pivot table, it is easy and fast. Actually, that row labels is really annoying. Let's click inside our pivot table, go to Design. Report layout, show in tabular. That just lists a much better label at the top. So instead of the row labels, it shows the column header name or the field name. So sample is much better. The pivot table 
um, is quick and easy. Formulas, however, will update. If I were to change this or the data was changing, if I change this to 55, as soon as I hit Enter, the formula updates. The pivot table does not. No problem. It's easy to update. You simply right click, refresh. And there we have it. Now I'm going to Control Z and Control Z to undo both of those, the refresh and that first number for the first sample. Now what if we didn't have this sample column here? Notice criteria, criteria, the pivot table, and the average ifs needed the number one to determine where the ones are here to pick out the numbers. If you didn't have this column over here, how in the world will you do this? Well, if it's really every third item, we can do that. Back in 116, we saw some great tricks for uh, what to do when you don't have this extra sample column. And we're going to use one of them right here. Now, we need the number for the first number. We need position 1. And when we get down here, we need position 4. When we get down to 3, we need position 7. So if there's a way with a formula element to create 1, 4, 7 as we copy down, then we could use the offset function to create a dynamic range. Hey, we're going to use our old favorite, the rows functions. I'm sitting in J5, so I'm going to type J dollar sign 5 colon J5. Now, the rows counts rows. Right now, it says how many rows are there from 5 to 5? There's one row. Notice that 5 is locked. This one is not, so Control Enter. When I copy down, that's an expandable range. You can see 5 is locked, but now the 8 is not. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's not going to do it. I'm going to have to get a little tricky here. So I'm going to put parentheses around this and subtract 1, because I'm going to need to start at 0 for this trick. Double click and send it down. Now I'm going to F2. Now I can multiply times the increment. Remember, it's every three items. So I'm going to multiply by 3. Hey, what's 0 times 3? 0. What's 1 times 3? Three? 3. What's 2 times 3? 6. Control Enter to populate that all the way down. We're almost there. We just need a starting position. So we simply F2 and add 1. And now we'll get, instead of 0, 3, 6, we'll get 1, 4, 7. Control Enter to populate that all the way down. Now that's the hardest part of this. Now we have to look at offset. This, in essence, will tell the offset function, which will create a dynamic range. It tells the offset in this column here of numbers, which relative position do we want to start? We're going to start our range at 1 and always go down 3. And then the next one will start at relative position 4 and go down 3, and then 7 and go down 3. So you ready? The magic of offset function. Offset. Now, when I hit Tab here, watch what happens. That parenthesis is already there, and it's used in this formula. The function steal that parenthesis, so you're going to have to type an extra one. Now, the way offset works is, hey, you need to give it a reference, which is a starting point. I'm going to start with the field name right above the first item and F4 to lock it, because we're going to copy this down. Comma, and there's the rows. Row says, from that starting position, how far do you want to go down? 1, 4, 7. Notice offset is going to go down that, and that'll be from the reference of starting position. That row says the new starting position. Now I'm going to come to the end, comma. Columns from that starting position, we don't need to move right or left any columns, so we leave that empty, comma, to skip over it. The height of this dynamic range is always going to be 3. We The width, we don't need it because it'll assume the width of the reference, which is width one column. That's all we need. Now, offset creates a range. If I were to enter this now and copy it down, it gives me a value error or some number from implicit intersection. But check this out. We can go to any particular cell here, highlight it, and hit the F9 key, the evaluation key, to see that, in fact, it did get 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. I'm going to click Escape, come down to the second one, highlight F9. 1, 2, 3. Are those the right numbers? They sure are. 1, 2, 3. That is magic. Offset has created a dynamic range. As we copy it down, it's always getting the first three, and then the next three, and then the next three.
Now I can simply put this into the average function. And guess what? The average function will have no problem with the values that offset delivers. Offset is delivering a range of three values. I'm simply going to Control Enter, double click, and send it down. And I get the same exact values without having that sample column. Now, there are other ways to do this if you want to look. Offset is a volatile function, which means if you have many formulas, huge data sets with lots of uh, ranges in, in your uh, formula, for example, uh, you know, you had 500 samples or something. It's offset is volatile, which means it recalculates all the time, and it might slow down your workbook. If that's the case, then you might have to switch over to creating dynamic range with index. Now, I'm not going to do this in uh, this particular video, but there it is. All right, so if we have data set with sample numbers and some numbers, pivot tables. Average ifs are the way to go if you don't have that sample column and you need every three items to calculate an average, then you can use offset inside of average. All right, we'll see you next video.